<laughs> How are we doing? All right. Yeah. I think the session was actually labeled maximize your energy and productivity to make more time. Making more time kind of difficult. You, you've got 24 hours a day, seven days a week like me. So it's much more about what do you do in that time? How can you be more productive in that time? And to some degree, how can you win time back? The good thing about personal human energy is it's renewable. So one of the tips, really simple tips, and believe you me, this has massive effect on your productivity, is to take more breaks. If you were to take a break, minimum every 90 minutes, you will be more productive. You will be smarter. You will be more creative. You will be healthier. Breaks are absolutely essential. You want to be more productive, then start taking a 5 to 15 minute break minimum every 90 minutes during your working days. What you do in those breaks, all sorts of things, but not the same work. <laughs> you don't switch to a different task. No, you take a break from the work. Productivity itself has a huge amount to do with how you use your mental energy, how much you've got and how much you use it. Being able to focus better, being able to concentrate better, and being able to really use the massive brain that you've got and the powers of it, those are key factors in being more productive. Let's look at how you work today. I'm going to look at three different ways of working. Multitasking means you're doing different tasks, different activities, but they're connected and they're focused on achieving the same singular outcome. Now, switch tasking, whereas multitasking is good in certain circumstances, switch tasking is, in terms of productivity, killing. I'll give you an idea of what switch tasking is, and you'll definitely recognize this, I'm sure. Let's take me working on this presentation a couple of days ago. Working on the presentation, and I had Outlook open on my laptop, so I saw emails popping up, and I think, oh, just have a quick look at that email. Oh, I'll quickly answer that. And then I'm going to go back to the presentation. My smartphone pings with a WhatsApp message. Have a, well, one of the kids, I'll quickly reply to that. I'm about to go back to the presentation, and I start working on it, and then my, one of my colleagues is on the phone to somebody, so I'm half listening to the conversation, but I'm working on the presentation. That's switch tasking. It takes quite a few minutes to get back into that flow state. What you need to do if you want real high productivity, something that is so difficult to do, just one thing at a time. <laughs> you say, how on earth will I get everything done? You will. You'll get it all done and more. What you have to do if you want to single task is you've got to avoid distractions. And that's real difficult. Because you, like me, we are addicts. We're addicted to distraction. It's in our human psyche. We see something go by, we look. So if you want to increase your productivity, you've got to sort of go into isolation mode. Even if it's just for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you schedule a block of time. Why do we always have meetings or telephone conference calls that most of the time seem to be multiples of 30 minutes? Why do we do that? Because Microsoft, oh, sorry, sorry the customer actually, because certain systems, <laughs> one of the software company's products forces you to do that. Or they kind of like suggest it. You want a meeting, boof, 30 minutes. You change it to boof, 60 minutes, 90 minutes. But before that, we had it in paper agendas too. It was just on the hour, so meeting, next meeting, call. And it's rubbish. You don't need 30 minutes or 60 minutes. So I, I have introduced this to many customers, and it really works. And it is such fun, really. <laughs> it creates anarchy in organizations. <laughs> so it's something I call 47-minute meetings. It's actually one of the chapters in my book that I wrote. But what I'm meaning here is when somebody invites you to a meeting, 
you send a reply saying, yeah, I'll be there, but I'll be there for 47 minutes. That's a meeting for an hour. If it's a half an hour meeting, say something, I'll be there for 23 minutes. And I'm serious, and then you leave. And that time you've got left over, you use to take one of the renewal breaks, debrief on the meeting, get ready for the next activity, whatever it is. When you are responsible for making a meeting, invite people, again, for times that they will regard as silly times. And they'll say to you, I think you've made a mistake. You say, no. And it will start a conversation. Push back, start a revolution against getting some of your precious time back from meetings. Have different types of meetings. Have meetings where in rooms where there are no chairs. I don't know if you've ever done it. Those meetings tend to be pretty short. No chairs, no tables. Just people with their pads or smartphones, whatever. It really works. Change the schedule. Why are we having this meeting every week? Let's try doing it every two weeks, or even better, once a month. All that kind of stuff. You can do all sorts of things. And the last point here, when people invite you to a meeting, say, I'll confirm my attendance when I get the agenda. Meetings are supposed to have agendas. They're meant to be, that makes you productive. No agenda, I'm not coming. It's really for your own good. If you are a strong giver, important to start saying no more often. And there are different simple ways to do that. The first thing you do when somebody says, could you do this for me? You say, I'll get back to you. Always the standard answer. I'll get back to you in an hour, tomorrow, next week, whatever is appropriate. That's your standard answer, full stop, never anything else. And in that time that you've bought yourself, you then consider, do I really want to do this? Can I do it? Could somebody else do it? Maybe I could do part of it and somebody else could do it. That's what I call the counter proposal. And it also gives you time that if you don't want to do it, for any, you can come up with the reasons and stick by them. It sounds simple, I know it's not. But if all you do is start off buying time and say, I'll get back to you, I guarantee you it will start a process. I always say to people, if you keep doing what you've always done, you will keep getting what you've always had. It's a fact of life. And if you're happy with the way things are, great. But if you want to change things, what will you do differently tomorrow to have more impact on your productivity? Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your time here. Thank you.